Debt Free in 30, where every week we take 30 minutes and get practical advice from industry experts about personal finance and living debt free. Here's your host, Doug Hoyes. Today's show and next week's show will be a bit different. Normally, I'm the host of this show and I interview a guest, but today I'm the guest. I'm going to play you the first half of an interview I did with Dave Callender on the Ask the Expert show broadcast on May 6th on 570 News in Kitchener. Dave asked me about how people get into debt problems with cars. I tell him some stories about how people end up owing a lot more on their car than it's worth, and we talk about practical solutions to the problem of debt and cars. But before Dave asked me about cars, it's been a year or two since I was on Dave's show, and in that time, our profession changed its name. So Dave started the interview by asking me about that name change. So let's pick up the show with Dave's first question about why we changed our name. Before we get into uh, the meat of today's discussion, it's been a while, as you say, since you've been on the show. Last time you were here, I think... Uh, I referred to you as a bankruptcy trustee, but now I hear you've you've gone and changed your name to licensed insolvency trustee. What what's up with that change? Well, so it wasn't actually me who changed it. It was the federal government of Canada who implemented the change, as the government is wont to do on April first of uh, two thousand seventeen, April Fool's Day. They decided that what we do is help people with their debt issues and. We don't just do bankruptcy. And in fact, at Hoyes Michaelis, we do fewer bankruptcies than we do consumer proposals. And so calling ourselves bankruptcy trustees kind of cuts out a big portion of what we do. So all trustees are now known as licensed insolvency trustees. And there are two components to that. Licensed meaning we are actually licensed by the federal government of Canada. There's lots of people out there who say, oh, I can help you with your debts. No problem. Give us a call. Pay us some money. We'll take care of it. Well, they actually can't. We are the only ones who are able to use the force of law to help you deal with your debts. And insolvency, of course, is what we do. If you've got more debts than you can handle, then it's a licensed insolvency trustee that you need to deal with. Maybe you could tell us a little bit more about Ahoy's Michaelis for folks who, who haven't heard you on the show before. Well, as I said, we help people with debt. So the typical person we deal with would uh, have had a you know a good job at some point in the past. They were able to get a, some credit and then something happened. Perhaps they lost their job, they got sick, they got downsized, maybe they've gone through a divorce, they used credit to survive, and now they've got a bunch of debt that they can't handle. And it's a worry because if you get behind on your credit cards and your bank loans and your income taxes, you're likely to have your wages garnished. Uh, you're getting phone calls at work. Bank accounts can get frozen. A whole lot of nasty stuff can happen. So people come to us and we work out either a consumer proposal or a bankruptcy. And a consumer proposal is quite simple. We make a deal with the people you owe money to. So a typical person we deal with might have forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 of what we call unsecured debt. So not car loans and mortgages. We'll talk about those on today's show. But things like credit cards, bank loans, payday loans, income taxes, and you're way behind on them. We talk to the people you owe money to and work out a plan where perhaps you pay... 20 cents, 30 cents, 40 cents on the dollar back, no more interest. So it's a win-win for everybody. The people you owe money to get more money than they'd get in a bankruptcy, and you don't have to go bankrupt. And again, we are licensed insolvency trustees, which means this is all governed by federal law. No one else can do this unless they have a license from the federal government. And all of our consultations are free. So there are no upfront fees. And the reason there are no upfront fees is it's illegal for us to charge upfront fees. That's one of the conditions of my government license. You come in, you talk to us for free, and we explain your options, and then you decide from there what's going to work for you. All right. Now, as you mentioned on the show, we, we've often talked about things like credit card debt, unsecured debts. I don't know if we've ever focused directly on vehicles. So let's start with cars. Why, why do people get into debt problems with, with their cars? Well, because we like driving new cars, and we like dip driving new trucks. And unfortunately, they're getting more and more expensive. I mean, I'm I'm an old guy, Dave. I won't say how old I am. But I remember when I started driving, there was no such thing as, you know, CD players in the car, let alone GPSs and rear view cameras and backup this and backup that. They're getting much more expensive. 
And as a result, very few people today pay cash when they go buy a car. And again, if you're listening to the show today, ask yourself that question. The car you're driving now, did you pay cash for it? Well, if it's a $1,000 car, perhaps you did. But it's very rare to see someone driving a brand new car that they went in and paid cash for. They get a loan to buy the car or they lease it. And, you know, again, we used to pay cash for everything, but then we started getting car loans and now cars are getting more expensive. And so it's not uncommon for a car loan to last for as long as eight years now. And these, you know, long loans are great for um, car sales, um, but unfortunately it's uh, it's very expensive for consumers. I mean, you you probably don't know this, but in Canada, automakers are selling about 41% of the vehicles they sell now with loans of at least six years or leases of at least five years. So that means you get a car, you, you get a loan to buy a car, and you will probably be paying for it for five, six, seven, even as, as much as eight years. And that's great for car sales. I mean, it, they hit a record uh, for the third straight year in 2016. Uh, but about 85% of cars are bought with debt, according to DeRocher Automotive Consultants. So you think it through. Vehicles depreciate over time. And you know, I mean, you drive a car off the lot, it's worth a a chunk less the the very first day you drive it off off the lot. And longer dated loans, so five years, six years, seven years, significantly increase the chance that you're going to end up owing more than your car is worth. Um, and we know from, from reports that the share of Canadians, here's another fact, the share of Canadians trading in vehicles with negative equity rose to 30% in 2015. And on average, they were underwater by about, well, just under $7,000 uh, Canadian, according to J.D. Power. So underwater means my car is worth $10,000, but there's more than $10,000 owing on it. And, uh, you know, this, these are serious problems that we're seeing. Tell me a little bit more about the kind of people you meet who have problems with cars and debt. Well, th- the typical person I see would be someone who um, um, they went to the car dealer. And again, let, let, uh, I'll ask the listeners to think this through. So when you went and bought your last car... Did you say to the car salesman, how much does this car cost? Or did you say, what's my monthly payment going to be? We tend to buy cars based on the monthly payment, not the total cost. And it's also very common, as I said, a big chunk of cars end up with a shortfall at the end of the loan or the lease. So you're buying a car, but you're bringing in the debt from the previous vehicle. So my old car, it's now three, four years old. I want to trade it in, but I'm short by five or $6,000 on the loan. No problem. So we give you the new car and we take the $5,000 you owed from the, owed from the old one and put it on the new one. So I'm buying a $30,000 car, but I end up with a $35,000 loan. And of course, the moment I drive the car off the lot, it's only worth 25000 or whatever. So there's a, a shortfall built into it um, right away. When people come to see me because they end up having to file a consumer proposal or go bankrupt, it's quite common to see a shortfall of $10,000. In fact, I almost don't have to ask someone, oh, you've got a car, you've had it for a couple of years, well, you're probably short $10,000. And by the time we do all the math, it's very common to to see that number. And so then you get someone who loses their job or gets sick or get divorced. They've got this car, they're underwater on it. And so what do they do? Well, they've they've got no choice at that point but to file a... uh, a proposal or a a bankruptcy. That was the first part of my discussion with Dave Callender about car loan debt. You can keep your car and keep paying your car loan if you file a consumer proposal or go bankrupt, but if you have a significant shortfall, it's often better to just surrender the car and include the shortfall in your consumer proposal or your bankruptcy. This is a bit of a confusing topic, so Dave and I got into more detail in the second part of the show after the commercial break. Here's the rest of our conversation. To start things off, we're focusing on debt surrounding cars. We all have to have one for the most part. Everyone drives here and there, and most of us, as Doug pointed out, love the shiny brand new cars, and that's kind of where we get into problems. So, 
Just to recap for folks who may have just joined the show, what what is the main problem surrounding purchasing cars and debt? Well, the main problem is the cost. So you're buying a car, and obviously when you buy the car, there's you know taxes, a whole bunch of other charges included in it. So the moment you drive a new car off the lot, it's worth less than what you just paid for it. So you buy a $30,000 car, whatever the number is, you end up paying $35,000 by the time you get all the taxes and this and that in it. If you wanted to sell that car the very next day, you can't get $35,000 for it. You can't even get $30,000 for it because anybody else can go and buy that brand new car for that price. Maybe you're lucky to get $25,000 for it. And of course, I'm making up numbers. These are these are rough numbers, but the the math is pretty daunting on it. Now, if you keep the car right till the end of the loan term, then you're fine. The loan's paid off. It's all good. But it's very common for the car place to phone you up and say, hey, and and, and in fact, this happens to me all the time. I get a letter from the place I bought my car and I drive a 2011 vehicle. So I'm not driving a brand new car. It's many years old, but I still get a, a letter from them every, you know, twice a year saying, hey, we've got this special trade in deal. You know, trade in your car, we'll, we'll get you a new one. Now, I don't have a, a loan on my car. It's It's old enough. There's nothing on it. But if you've got a car that's two years old and it's like, oh, I can get the newest thing, the, the shiniest thing, I trade it in and what happens? I've got a shortfall on it. So there's you know $20,000 left on the loan, but the car is only worth fifteen. No problem. The dealer says, we'll take that $5,000 shortfall and we will roll it into your new loan. Now we're going to sell you a $40,000 car. That's great. Well, your loan is 45000 And if you do that once or twice, in other words, if you do that every couple of years, you've always got a shortfall. So you're never in a position where you can say, you know what, I'd like to reduce my cost by turning in the car. You can't do it because there's always this big shortfall. And if that's your only debt, that's fine. But of course, the people we deal with at Hoys Michaelis end up having a lot of other debts as well. And it just, it just compounds the problem. So what is your advice then if we're thinking about getting a car loan? Well, number one, it's more than just the monthly payment. So a common sales technique for a car loan company, uh, uh, the, the car dealer, would be to say, well, what can you afford? And if the answer is, well, I can afford $400 a month, no problem. We are going to find something that is $400 a month. Now, it might end up being an eight-year loan in order for you to be able to pay for it, but no problem. We can find something that will will get you into that. I'm much more interested in what is the total cost I'm paying? So why don't you start with that question? When you're buying a car, ask the dealer, if I was to pay cash right now, cash, cash on the barrel head, how much would it cost me? And that's a much more relevant number than how much am I going to be paying every month? Because, of course, the monthly payment can be adjusted up or down based on uh, on how long it runs. You also want to figure out how much you can actually afford. So can you actually afford $400 a month? Is that realistic? So it might not be a bad idea to spend a few minutes before trotting off to the car dealership to actually crunch the numbers. Do a budget figure out what you can realistically afford. And again, people get caught on this all the time. It's not just the payment on the car. You've got to pay insurance. And if you're a 22-year-old male, then your insurance is going to be a massive number. You've also got to put gas in the car. you got to do repairs and maintenance. If it's a brand new car with a full warranty, okay, your, your maintenance costs aren't going to be that great. But if it's a used car... Well, guess what? Cars need tires. Cars need oil changes. So factor in all those costs as well. So I'm a big believer in keeping your loan payment as short as possible. If you can pay cash, fantastic. But at the very least, keep the loan payment as short as possible. And one way to do that is to have as big a down payment as possible. If you get into trouble, then talk to a professional about it. So as you said at the top of the show, Dave, we are at Hoys Michael as licensed insolvency trustees. We can help make deals with your creditors to deal with these kind of issues. Now, I want to be very specific here. A consumer proposal or a bankruptcy deals with your unsecured debt. So it deals with credit cards, bank loans, payday loans, even income taxes are included in a consumer proposal. A secured debt, like a car loan, is not 
dealt with directly in a consumer proposal. And a secured debt is a debt that is attached to something. So there is a car attached to the debt. That's a secured debt. So if you were to file a consumer proposal, you can keep your car. A lot of people don't understand this. As long as you continue making the payments on the car, you can keep the car. No problem. The decision you've got to make is, does that make sense? So go back to the whole thought process about the shortfall. I've got a shortfall on the car of five or $10,000. Does it make sense to keep the car, keep making the loan payments, knowing full well that I'm going to be paying five or $10,000 more than the car is worth over the life of the loan? Your choice, if you're filing a proposal or a bankruptcy, is to say either I'm keeping the car and I'm going to keep making all the loan payments or right at the start of the proposal, I'm going to surrender the car. I'm going to say to the car dealer or the bank, here you go, here are the keys, it's your car now. And if they take the car and sell it before the proposal is up and running, any shortfall is included in the proposal. So you can actually eliminate that debt in the proposal or the bankruptcy if you are willing to give up the car. And this is a very difficult decision for people because I need my car to get to work. I mean, in the, you know, Kitchener, Waterloo, Cambridge, Guelph area here, there is no subway. You can't take a subway to work. So a lot of people drive and I guess, you know, the LRT will eventually be built and I'll be taking that. But um, at the moment, Cars are the way most people travel. And so it's a very difficult decision to decide, do I give up the car or not? You got to really crunch the numbers, but you also got to look at what your options are. And so if your you know, friend, family member has an old couple of thousand dollar car that they can, they can sell you, in a lot of cases, you're better off doing that than trying to hang on to a vehicle that's just going to put you deeper and deeper into debt. Uh, I, I'm glad you pointed this out because, again, I don't think we've ever really dealt with this directly on the show before. I had no idea that you could return the vehicle and make that shortfall part of the consumer proposal. And this is why you want to talk to a licensed insolvency trustee up front because we understand the rules. And these rules have evolved over the years. If you go back you know, 10, 15, 20 years, it was not the way I'm describing it today. It used to be, and there was one bank in particular that always did this, if you filed a bankruptcy, they took your car. No questions asked, that was it. The government changed the law a few years ago to say that a secured creditor cannot cancel a secured contract, in other words, a car loan, if your payments are up to date. So if your payments are up to date on your car loan, when you go bankrupt or when you file a consumer proposal, you can keep the car as long as you keep making the payments. But... Is that the correct answer for you? And in a lot of cases, no, it is not the correct answer to keep an older vehicle with a big shortfall, particularly if you've got a lease that has a mileage clause in it. Well, I know I'm already 20,000 clicks over the limit. Okay, so when you return that vehicle in a year, well, you're going to get hit with a big charge. Mm -hmm. So in a lot of cases, it's better to say, you know what, give the vehicle back now, find something cheaper, and yes, you, you, if you're going to finance another vehicle right at the start of a bankruptcy or proposal, it's possible. There are certainly car dealers in town who will do it, and you call our office at 310 Plan. We can tell you who, who will do that. But often the deal is the first year you end up paying a pretty high interest rate, you know, could be 25, 30%. So you don't want to be getting much more than a $5,000 car loan. Wow. It's huge. It's huge. But in a lot of cases, after the first year, You've made all your payments. Well, now it becomes a you know ten or fifteen percent loan, and by the third year, you can often get back down to much more reasonable rates. So, in a lot of cases, it's the better answer is to do the, the make the tough decision, get the fresh start, and surrender the the vehicle. But it is up to you. That's the point. But the folks at Hoyas Michaelis can help you crunch the numbers and figure out what makes sense for you. Absolutely. And I always recommend bring your lease documents in with you. Bring your loan documents in. We can go through it and figure out if there's some kind of weird accelerator clause, a mileage clause, a penalty for breaking the lease, whatever. So we can tell you. And we, we also have access to the, the black book. So we can punch it into our, our computer and tell you how much your vehicle is likely worth today. You can also go back to your dealership and get a, an appraisal from them. Hey, how much cash would you give me for it today? 
day, and then you know for sure what you're dealing with. I don't like making decisions without proper information. I like to know exactly what I'm dealing with, and that's what we emphasize at Hoys Michael is let's help you get the proper information, educate you so that you can make the right decision for you and your family. My guest today on Ask the Experts, we're speaking with Doug Hoyes of Hoyes Michaelis, licensed insolvency trustees, online at hoyes.com. That's H-O-Y-E-S dot com or call 310-PLAN. That was my interview with Dave Callender on the Ask the Experts show on 570 News, where I gave my advice on how to deal with car loan debt. My advice, well, it's more than just about the monthly payment. Figure out what you can actually afford. Keep your loan payment as short as possible. Have as big a down payment as possible. And if you get into trouble, get professional advice. That's what we're here for. There are two big things in life we borrow to purchase. Cars and houses. We talked about cars today and next week I'm going to play the second half of my interview with Dave where I talk about houses. Real estate is a big topic at the moment so you won't want to miss that discussion. That's our show for today. Full show notes and a complete transcript of today's show are available at hoys.com. That's H-O-Y-E-S dot com. That was our discussion about car debt. So until next week, when we'll discuss mortgages and real estate, I'm Doug Hoys. Thanks for listening. That was Debt Free in 30.